and welcome. This is the BACL Turnover. I'm your host and pre presenter, Joe Crabb. Hi, and I'm Chris Vasilchu. And throughout the show, we'll have a large amount of pundits and experts to talk you through the BACL Turnover. Today's show is truly packed. We've got things all the way from highlight reels to even exclusive interviews with celebrities. And right at the very end, we've got a special treat. Me and some of the producers took on a local American football players in a cutback challenge. Moving swiftly on to our first game, where we see the highlights of the Eastern Gators versus the Northern Bobcats in the kickoff of BACL2. Give it up for Naughty by Nature! Truly a fantastic game and a great way to kick off the second season of the BACL. Chris, you were there, you watched the game. Yeah. As a quarterback myself, you know I want to talk about the quarterbacks. Yeah. Talk me through what um, both teams had at quarterback position. Well, I think both teams had a, a good QB at their helm. And uh, they were both great with uh, their feet and the throwing. Bro uh, Alex Crow, obviously he's a small small player, but he managed to move through through down the field evading tackles and just scoring points. Dami, well, he's known as a bigger QB, more powerful, right, right. but he, he's quite fast for his size. And as you, you were there, you refereed the game. What was the energy yeah. like that, uh, from, the, from all the players, the sideline, the coaches, to be back for the first game of the season? Well, it's great to start the season off again. Both teams are going for the win. They were energized and they're just, they just trying to beat each other, really. I heard a lot about Jack Verling, the receiver for the, yeah. for the Eastern Gators. How did he play? Yeah, he played, he played a really good game, actually. He made a lot of blocks downfield, came back upfield just to make blocks. That's what we like to see in yeah. wide receivers. And Aston Richards the running back for yeah. the Northern Bobcats. Well, so far he hasn't had his, a good game compared to last season. He, he averaged 100 plus yards per game last season. But it wasn't, it was, it was good this season, but he's not as good. Uh, thank you for that, Chris. And now we're going to move on to an exclusive interview with head, with head coach Ben Herrod. He is the creator and founder of the BACL and he wants to shed some insight onto their first week of action from the BACL. The BACL is a community league, so it's, it's based around bringing kids in that have never played the sport before. 
um, we are uh, drafting some very experienced players from the Pride, some elite level players that will bring the level of overall play up, um, which gives them uh, a chance to see what they're trying to aspire to be like. Um, it gives them a good solid grounding in all their football fundamentals, such as blocking, tackling, carrying the football, catching, throwing. Um, we then, if they if they if they shine, if they're good performers on the football field, then we'd look at maybe um, asking if they want to join us at the Pride here and coming into the squad here, uh, where they get an opportunity to play American high schools in Germany and um, other international teams as well. Um, and we've had already three players in Luke Holloway, Cameron Graham, and Andrew Saunders. Um, who were all community-based players that within the first six months of playing the sport were selected to represent the Great Britain under-19 team against Holland. So there's, there's great exit pathways for them um, as they develop, as they grow up in the sport. Once they turn 19, they can go and play for our local community teams, the Bristol Aztecs, who are a top-flight National League team as well. The community players that we've had in this year, the kids that, are, that we've not drafted into the league through the Pride, um, they've all been relatively good, um, but they're they're quite young. They're novices. They're starting. No one's really shone out yet very early in the season. Um, but some of the pride kids that that um, haven't had an opportunity with us, um, working their way into the team with us at the pride, have really had a chance to sort of um, stand out in the um, in the community league. I know Richard Dillingworth um, got a touchdown for the Gators. Um, he's a kid that that was uh, struggling to get on the field with us. Um, also know the uh, Tiggy Sanko um, with the Falcons um, got an opportunity at quarterback with them, and he really ran the show for uh, for the Falcons. I think he got two of their three touchdowns on the day. Um, Dylan Willett's another Falcon kid who's been in and out the lineup with us. Um, good linebacker, but got to show what he could do as a running back as well, which is nice. Okay. Thank you very much for Coach Harris for giving us that interview. It was truly great. And now, a very new and exciting segment of BACL Turnover, the MVP of the week, which will be hosted by Archie in each show. Archie going to talk you through it now. Okay, so basically what's this is an interactive game for the viewers, and it works like this. So it's going to be an MVP system. It's uh, every week viewers will select an offensive MVP from each team, a defensive MVP from each team, and an athlete of the week. And basically what that means is an athlete of the week is someone who makes every all the plays. He seems to be everywhere on the field and he's just doing what he does really well. How would the viewers be able to get in touch and form, submit their, their picks? Okay, so in the description below, there's gonna be a link, and what players will do, and viewers will do, is they'll click on that link, and then they'll submit who they think is gonna be athlete, offensive, defensive MVP. And uh, if they get that right, if they get one pick right, they win a t-shirt for a team of their choice. And if they get all three picks right, they're gonna win a hoodie for a team of their choice. And Archie, who would be your picks for offensive, defensive and athlete of the week this week? Okay, my offensive MVP is going to be Dami, quarterback for the Bobcats. My defensive will be Jack Jones for the Cowboys. And finally, my athlete of the week has got to be Jack Berlin for the Gators. Thank you very much for your time. And we at the BACL Turnover would like nothing more than for everyone to be involved through either social media, keeping in touch through our texting and stuff. And that's how you can get involved with the athlete of the week as well. So thank you very much. Moving swiftly on, we're going to go on to our social media aspect and we'll be joined by our social media expert, Connor Summers, and he'll talk you through how everyone at home can get, in, get involved. Yeah, several ways you can get in touch um, here at the BACL Turnover. Details are on your screen now um, to get in touch using uh, hashtag BACL Turnover and we'll pick your tweets up here. Um, this week, a couple of tweets coming in that, that questioning the panel's um, opinions on the BACL so far. Um, do the pundits feel there were any surprises in, in week one's games? That's coming from Jordan Wilkins. Well, I think that the um, Eastern Gators are the main surprise. I mean, look at them last year. Yeah, they made the final, but they were smothered by the Bobcats in the final and they came out and in the first half they dominated them. So I'm thinking the coaching staff changed, got some good pride draft. I think that's a big surprise how they stepped up to the mark. Yeah. Um, Sam Darlington Smith comes in and says, who has the best defence in the league? Oh, that's a tough one. At the moment, I would have to say the Cowboys. They've got all the, the players they need, DBs, linebackers, D-line. They don't really need anything else. They've got great coaching staff in Shane Prosser. He's a former head co uh, former defensive coach of Team Europe, and he's a great, he gets yeah. them in all a great, great defense. He's got a great yeah. playbook. Brilliant. A uh, long question coming in from James Vickery. Besides the Tomahawks, who do you think 
The top quarterback in the BACL will be this year besides week one. Well, Ooh. I'm sorry to be biased, but I've got to take myself here. I've got self-belief. Mm. I play for the Southern Falcons. I believe I can take us all the way to the final and probably even win it. Uh, talking of the, the Southern Falcons, uh, do you think they can improve on their performance last week? That's coming from Steve Mass. Yeah, I definitely think we'll be able to uh, perform better than last week. We made a lot of mistakes. We lost a couple of people early on in the game. We have players yeah. playing out of position, all such all yeah. such factors. We can only get better from that, from yeah. that, um, from that performance. I think next week we'll, we'll have a better, better game. Brilliant. Uh, lots of tweets coming in. As you said, if you want your tweet uh, read out here on the show, all you have to do is hashtag BACL turnover and ask us ask us a question. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for your tweets. They're all very excellent questions. And thank you to Connor for coming in and discussing with us. Now, earlier on in the year, we got a very exclusive interview with none other than Vernon Kay. And he shared some insight on his own personal opinions on the football in the UK and where he thinks it's going to grow. Take a look. Vernon, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Firstly, uh, what's the role of the Channel 4 show in bringing uh, American football to the UK public? Uh, I think that Channel 4 uh, uh, have been at the forefront of American football in the UK ever since the mid-80s. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a filler for those guys on Sunday evening. But no, I think because of the popularity of American football, the fact that Sky have got fantastic coverage, and that Channel 4 have got the uh, Sunday night game as well as the highlight show. I think it just keeps the, the interest for American football bubbling in the UK. And we've actually got more coverage in this, in this country than anyone in a particular state in America would have. Because I think you only get two, three live games in America. Uh, whereas over here we get five during the week. Uh, so it's really good, really impressed. How did you yourself get into American football? Uh, I was one of those kind of kids at school that... I was pretty average at everything, cricket, football, cross country, hockey. We actually played hockey in Bolton. Uh, so I just got bored of doing all those normal sports that you do at school. And then when I used to always do my homework on a Sunday night. So I'd watch the Wonder Years and then watch the American football. I just got into it that way. And then I used to get, there was a newspaper, a weekly newspaper called First Down. And they, uh, it was like British American football and NFL in the paper and there was an advert for a Manchester team, a junior team, so I phoned them up, joined them and then that was it really. Um, how do you see the game developing over the next 10 years in the UK? Uh, I think in the, in the UK I think we'll definitely have more regular season games, I mean we've got three next year. I think instead of a franchise they may try bringing eight regular season games over here to see how we would fare for a full season because I think the main issue is whether or not fans would buy season tickets. Uh, I don't necessarily think it might be at Wembley. It could be at either the Millennium Stadium or Twickenham or a, 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 big, a big stadium that holds you know, between 50 and 60,000 because I don't think you'll get Wembley full on a regular. I mean, I hope we do, but I don't think you get Wembley sold out for eight games with one particular team. But I think if we, have, if we try it with eight different games, 16 different teams, see what the interest is then, then you can use that as a litmus test to see how fans are going to do when it comes to buying tickets in the future. Um, from a media point of view, what was your opinion on the best way to promote the game? I think the best way to promote the game is just to encourage people to watch it. Because it's one of those sports where people, people fear watching it because they don't understand it. But when you tell them the basics and how you move the ball, it's actually really easy. You know, it's no, no more difficult than rugby, let's say. Um, but I think media-wise, I think we just need, I think the television coverage is awesome, really good. And I just think that it's that old adage of if you make the back pages of any tabloid or a broadsheet, then that's when you can deem yourself as a popular sport within the UK. And I think we only ever get back page coverage during Super Bowl week, uh, you know, which is, which is no mean shakes, but we'll see. Uh, and lastly, who's your pick to win the Super Bowl this year and why? I had the 49ers. I put all my money on the 49ers. Uh, I know. Because I just thought in, I thought they drafted well. I thought they've got some good free agents. I think they're a good, solid team. Got a good defence. Defence wins championships. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but I also had the Chiefs as a wild card. So, but it look, I, Do you know what? I think the Patriots will do it. I don't think... I, I, it's be tough to beat Tom Brady twice and I think Peyton Man, you know I, I, I don't well he's not done it yet but we'll see thank you very much for your time this afternoon yeah, thank thanks to Vernon Kay for giving us that fantastic interview he's such a humble and amazing guy and it was truly a, a wonderful experience 
Moving on, we're going down for an interview with Richard Illingworth, a player for the BACL, Eastern Gate as wide receiver. He shared some insight on his own personal story of how he's played football so far. How'd you get into football in the first place? I got into football by going to a Baffler team training session just after the NFL season just finished. Uh, what brought you to Bristol to play football? Uh, I wanted to take my game to the next level, become faster, stronger and get the fundamentals down um, and just become an all-round better player. Okay. What made you want to play the position of wide receiver? Uh, I didn't exactly choose the position of wide receiver, I went to my first training session, that's where they put me, but I guess I've always had good hand-eye coordination and alright speed. Okay. Uh, who's the best player you've played alongside? Uh, alongside, probably Jack Bowen, number 87, Pride. Okay, and against? Uh, played against, uh, it's probably Will Crowfoot, number 23. Thanks Rich for giving us your time on that interview. And now moving on, we're going straight on to game two of the, of the week one's action, which took place between Southern Falcons and the Central Cowboys in a hard fought game. A great game, hard fought by both teams, a disappointing loss for my Southern Falcons though. Chris, you were there, you played in the game, yeah. what are your thoughts? Well, I think we could have started off a lot better. Well, we, we, gave, we gave the ball away a lot, made too many mistakes on defence. They just, they just ran a lot of trick plays and we couldn't handle it really. The, um, 
the com combination of Tappy and Tunde was unstoppable. Like two great running backs, they cut us up a lot. Reverse field made us chase them, tied us out, tied the defense out. Yeah. Have it looking positive for the Falcons in the second half. It was a tie game when they got players back into their normal positions. Things started to look a bit up. Yeah. Started playing some tough defense, run the ball well ourselves. Yeah. I think that was really great. Yeah. What did you think of the play of Tiggy from the Southern Falcons? Yeah, I think he was really key for our team. He really held the team together, kept the, the game going, allowed us to put some points on the board. If it wasn't him, we wouldn't really be in that situation. Uh, talk about the Cowboys defense, Connor Nicholson, yeah. Tom Simone, JJ, all those players. There's a really good defense they've got there. With Shane as a, as a defensive coach, he knows what he's doing. He's got a really good playbook and he's got all the weapons he needs on defense. Well, if it wasn't just defensive, they put up 34 yeah. points. It's a good offense they've got there as yeah. well, which forced to be reckoned with. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. It was really great knowledge. Moving on, it's quarterback challenge. The time we've all been waiting for when me, Chris, Connor take on some of the locals in a quarterback challenge. Let's go. This is the quarterback challenge, and I'm going to hit that. Jack Berlin, Eastern Gators, wide receiver and linebacker. Chris Versucci, athlete, Southern Falcons. Arch Stevens, wide receiver and strong safety, Southern Falcons. Yep. <laughs> Richard Dillingworth, Eastern Gators, wide receiver. <laughs> James Vickery, Eastern Gators, wide receiver. Massive fit. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Gaze, so Eastern Gators, tight end. Huh? Oh. Bounce, one bounce. <laughs> Jake Thomas, Welsh Tom of Hawks, number one. Oh, oh no. One harder. <laughs> yep. Connor Summers, I can't throw it that far, so I'm gonna take a kick. Let's go for a take. Walk forward. 